Hey guys, Vol SC here. How's it going? Uh, this video we're going to be talking about the subject of classified objectives, which are something that you encounter in Infinity the game. If you guys have played Infinity, you'll be uh, well aware of them. Uh, so we were talking the other day, I think, on Facebook, or some people were talking about uh, the mission Highly Classified, which is a um, special ITS mission where it's really all about the classified objectives. But uh, most of the other missions do involve classified objectives as a sort of side mission, like the uh, secondary objectives, uh, shall we call them in a lot of cases. So in this video, I'm going to be sort of breaking them down, uh, talking about them in general, and uh, sort of discussing my opinions about them. Uh, before I sort of get into the actual detail about the missions themselves and about the mechanics, mechanical sort of stuff, let's just begin with some preliminary remarks. So first thing I want you to know about classified objectives is that there are currently uh, two different camps of people in the Infinity community. That's all the people who play Infinity and, and sort of care about it. There's uh, a group of people who, who like classified objectives, who accept classified objectives, who appreciate them as a, a good part of the game that helped to make Infinity good. Uh, I think the point of view of a lot of these people is that um, they give you something to do other than sort of killing your opponent. So uh, it adds a bit more variety to the game and it uh, makes the sort of alternative abilities of a lot of your troopers a bit more useful in terms of uh, engineering and doctoring and uh, using decharges and hacking and so forth in a way that's not directly sort of confrontation with your opponent in some, some spots. Then there's another camp of people who do not like uh, classified objectives, people who feel that uh, they detract from the game in the current state, that they need to be either removed or fixed, and that Infinity could be a better game without them in their current state. And I just want you to, guys to know straight away that I, your boy, Volasi, am in the second camp of people. I do not like classified objectives in their current state. I don't think that they're actually a good thing. Okay, so... <laughs> Just so, so you understand that. All my cards are on the table as we're watching this video. It's going to be another one of those videos. <laughs> I know you're very used to that by now. Um, second point. Just because I don't like classified objectives doesn't mean that they ruin the game or they make the game unplayable. Obviously, I play Infinity as much as I can. I love Infinity. Um, I can you know easily have a good time with classified objectives. Sometimes they are interesting. Um, it's just on the weight, on the balance of it, uh, the things against them uh, outweigh the things for them, in my opinion. So they're not, they're not sort of that broken that they're, they're a real problem. Um, I did read once um, the people playing the 2020 version, which is a sort of customized community version of Infinity, uh, aside from the actual official ITS, that one of the um, things that they liked about their own version of the game was that uh, classified objectives are a bit too random in, in the main game. But we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Third a point that I need to raise before we get into uh, the real talk about um, the actual cards and, and what they're doing everything is to dispel a particular myth, a particular uh, sentiment that a lot of players reach for when they're talking about classified objectives, and that is the following. So some people say, hey, if it wasn't for classified objectives, the game would be too much about just shooting your opponent and killing your opponent, and it would just be about like annihilation, it would just be all about sort of who can wreck the other person first. All right, so that is a bit of a sort of a claim that a lot of people sort of fall back on. And I just want to say that that, that is false. That is just not the case. If we had Infinity without classified objectives, and could I point out that some of the uh, new ITS submissions don't actually use them at all, we can still have a game of Infinity which is really good, a lot of fun, and uh, still very much mission-oriented. In fact, we can have a very healthy balance of killing your opponent, controlling the table, doing that, versus, uh, you know, going after things and completing missions. Even when you look at something like uh, Annihilation Mission in the ITS pack, I feel that the current state of Annihilation is more about that extra classified objective than it is about killing people, and that's the mission called Annihilation, which I think is really kind of silly. Um, if you, uh, you guys watched my bat reps from my tournament last week, uh, Game 3, Shazvasti versus Ariadna, that was safe area, and uh, I can tell you in that particular mission, we drew classified objectives, and it was possible to pick up points from them, but both me and my opponent completely ignored the classified objective, and everything we were doing that game was just solely focused on the mission, just gearing up to that last end game state where we'd have more points in the zones than the other player. I lost, you know, half my models. I had another 200 points, obviously, in, 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 uh, in camera markers and so forth, 
but I wasn't going after the Ariadna troops to try and kill him. I was picking a few guys off here and there and defending myself, but that game was just cagey. It was all about safe area. It was all about actually getting models into the zones. It had nothing to do with classified objectives. And uh, a lot of the other missions are the same. Um, when it comes to pressing buttons, there's a healthy sort of uh, give and take when it comes to how much damage do I do to my opponent? How much do I sort of hold back? You know, when in the game am I going to go after the objectives? So we already do have a very mission-focused game. Uh, we don't miss out on anything if classified objectives are not there. So I think that's just a really important point to make, and I think that a lot of people really need to take that to heart. Um, even if classified objectives aren't there, you're still using your doctor, right? You still need a doctor if you um, are going to be attacking a very difficult arrow piece and there's a risk of getting shot with a crit. A doctor is a beautiful way of actually giving yourself a second chance there. Same reason you take an engineer. Uh, hackers, very relevant in this game, regardless of data scan and other uh, classified objectives, even decharges. I mean, you've got missions now where you have to blow up the actual thing, the looting and sabotaging uh, thing that you guys, you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, coup de gras, obviously removing a model, um, still relevant to prevent it from being revived. It doesn't have to be a classified. So the point is classifieds are not necessary. So let's move on now to talk about them in a bit more detail in terms of what they add and what they, they don't add to the Okay, so in making the case as to why classified objectives aren't great at the moment, the main argument that comes up is that some of them are easier to achieve than the others. And uh, let's just discuss that a little bit. Before we, actually, before we get into even that, I just want to point out that what I'm about to explain to you guys is not me making a case for there being a massive disparity where some of the classified objectives are just not, not possible, they're just way too difficult, you can't complete them, and some classified objectives are just automatically, you know, you just have to lift a finger and they're done. It's not that wide. Even the easiest classified objective um, isn't too far off the most difficult classified objective. It's just about the principle and about the fact that there is an unnecessary disparity, which is sort of getting in the way of otherwise uh, good games in some cases. So let's go through it. Um, you've got a list of them here on um, in the uh, PDF for the uh, ITS season, and uh, there's a whole bunch of them. I believe that retro engineering got replaced with kidnapping recently, so that was uh, an already difficult mission. Um, we're being replaced by a slightly easier one. So you can sort of see that Corvus Belly um, are slowly making amends in their tournament pack just to make uh, classifieds less and less impactful, I believe. One thing that they've been doing recently is they've been uh, taking away the HVT, replacing it with a designated target which you can kill. I think that's a bold move. I think that's really good. It means that you're less reliant on sort of just picking up a, a classified than you are on actually moving over and killing something, especially with your data tracker. And that's something that you can do regardless of whether you have first turn or, or last turn. And that actually is a bit more of an interesting mechanic because you've got to weigh up whether you're going after an enemy uh, designated target, which is not part of their army and won't detract orders from them or material from them, or do you go after them to kill their stuff? And that's not a no-brainer decision. There's actually some some thinking involved there and, and some real relevant decision-making. So even Corvus Belly seem to be slowly shifted away, away from the, the classifieds being too impactful and too much, um, you know, too much in terms of variance effect in the game. Okay, all right. So classified objectives. The one that stands out to me here as being one of the easiest to complete is actually experimental drug. So if you pick up the classified for that, it means that you just have to get a doctor or paramedic to recover from the unconscious to normal state by using either the doctor special skill or using a medikit. So the thing about that classified objective is that you can shoot an enemy model as you normally ordinarily would. And if they beat you in the face-to-face -face role, you are going to use your doctor to revive your guy as you normally would. So you're just playing the game normally and efficiently. And while you're in the course of doing that, hey, you picked up a classified objective, you get an extra point for that. If that's going to like make or break the game, if you just desperately need that extra point to win, you might even be moving uh, models deliberately in line of sight of enemy troopers and uh, have them, you know get shot and your opponent may not know that you're going for the experimental drug and then hey you revive him also and this is important there's this faction in the game called yuching and they have this guy called the Quangxi, and no other model in the game can have this but he has a rule called the biolocator 
And uh, by spending a short skill, he can make himself go unconscious voluntarily. And uh, Yu Ching have access to some fairly decent doctors in Imperial Service. They can take a soft attack. And all you really need to do, if you have this classified objective, is to make your Quang Shi go unconscious, and then you spend a short skill to revive him. And if he dies, then you do it on another one, because you've probably got like four or even eight in the case of Imperial Service. So as you can tell, it's fairly trivial to actually pick up this particular classified objective. So if you get that particular objective, you're happy. Um, you get dealt two of them, and you get to choose one, and that's one of the mitigating things with classified objectives, I must say. Uh, that's one thing that helps classified uh, objectives. It helps you avoid them being you know, as bad as they could be, but they're not quite as bad thanks to that. But if you pick, say, um, experimental drug and your other one's a very difficult one, you're going to go for experimental drug and you can complete that. Um, test run is similar, except uh, it's just uh, pass an engineering check. So if you've got a tag, um, by the way, you don't have to recover the... Um, the uh, the target from unconscious state, you just have to get it to recover any structure point. So if you've got a tag that takes some damage, maybe deliberately, uh, you can quite easily pick this up, especially if it has uh, remote presence. Um, your engineer can sort of get those re-rolls later on. So again, test run can be easy if you're running an engineer and you're sort of running the kind of army that has a lot of um, structure points. I particularly like Onyx with the um, the med tech, Dr. Worm, who's very good with his willpower. And, you know, you've, you've, the whole deployment zone is crawling with stuff that could be targeted, like your Unidrons and your R-Drones and stuff like that. So um, very easy to complete in some contexts. Another one there, um, uh, Coup de Gras, well, Extreme Prejudice, I should say. So all you've got to do is uh, basically go up to an unconscious enemy model and uh, just remove them from play. And that doesn't take a role. It's not like the other two where you have to actually pass the whip check. You just have to find an unconscious model. And quite a lot of the time, your opponent's going to be making an attack run with something, uh, maybe some sort of war band or drop trooper or something attacking your lines, and they do a whole bunch of damage, and you're left with an enemy model who's just a throwaway there, which you can easily kill as long as you don't remove it with a shock, and then go over and coup de gras and remove it. Or maybe you're in enemy territory, your ninja has moved up, decides not to use his double action close cup weapon, just attack straight up with a pistol, Assuming they have pistols, I can't even remember whether ninjas have pistols or not. Anyway, you guys get the idea. I mean, most clo close combat troops have an another option other than um, their double action or monofilament or whatever is going to remove that model on the table. Like, even just barehanded will work fine. If you are uh, like CC23 with surprise attack and martial arts level 3, well, it's not going to be that hard to reduce them to unconscious and then complete that. So, extreme prejudice, very, very easy. Um... I just want to make the side comment that some people may say, hey, but uh, that actually is a really good rule to stop people using shock from so much because we're in a meta right now where shock is a really uh, valid, like really widespread and powerful thing. I just want to point out that most of the things that can have shock can opt not to use it so that they can still complete extreme prejudice. If you have a multi-weapon, you can pick the AP ammo instead if it's very important to you to render the model unconscious. If you have a bot with assisted fire, well, you can always choose not to put assisted fire on it. If you're a model like Shishkin with a Red Fury, well, you can shoot your pistol or go in close combat with it and use Prothion anyway. So um, there are a lot of cases where you can just simply uh, get away with it anyway and, and still use your shock when you need to, you need to use shock. Telemetry, um, not as easy, but the thing is, um, it says to succeed at an attack against an enemy trooper using a Ford Observer, well, if the enemy model's unconscious, you can still do it. So all you need to do, again, is find an unconscious model and hit it with a Ford Observer very easy, in the same way that uh, data scan is actually not that hard, just because, again, although it's a, a whip minus three check, um, you can still do it against uh, an unconscious trooper. So you can see that some of these classified objectives are relatively easy to get, but some of them really aren't uh, comparatively. They're very doable, they're just not as straightforward. They require more effort, they're riskier. So looking at sabotage, you've got to send your model with detargers, and most armies will only have like one such model. It's usually just going to be an engineer or something. You've got to move that model all the way over to your opponent's half of the table, and then you've actually got to spend an order actually placing the charge and detonating it. So you've got to not be hit by any unseen sort of arrows from hidden deployment. You've probably got to clear out any arrow pieces they may be using to cover your approach. And you've got to spend a bunch of orders getting there. And after your models got there, well, you, it might be in danger. You might be giving away a trooper to do that. Whereas with, um, you know, test run and experimental drug, well, you don't. Your model's going to be over your side of the table. 
So if you have if you have to go for sabotage, it's just a much more difficult classified objective to complete than the other ones. Let's look at um, espionage. So you're getting a hacker within range of the enemy HVT model. Well, that's a bit more difficult than um, data scan because you've actually got to go over to the HVT model, which may not be that convenient. And correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the HVT gets to reset. And obviously you're not going to be doing it again against an unconscious HVT because that's not going to happen. So that's not as easy if, if I'm understanding that correctly. Designation, that's where you've actually got to get into the line of sight of the HVT and pass not just one but two Ford Observer roles or two Spotlight hacking programs against it. Um, so again, um, doable. Yep, give you that. I mean, that can be done, but is it as easy in, you know, oh, not just over one game, like one specific case, but over like 10 to 20 games, are you going to pull that one off as many times as you pull off, um, you know, a couple of the other ones? Inoculation, a doctor or paramedic must get to the HVT and succeed in a whip plus three check. So you can use G-Servant. So they've got to get their model actually all the way over into physical contact with your HVT. And um, again, um, if any arrows show up unexpectedly, that could be really troubling. So you can, I think you can see the point here that um, some of some classified objectives are easier than others. If you only have to do one classified objective and you pick up your two cards and one of them is sabotage and the other one is HVT designation, you're not really going to be lacking it for either of them. And if you don't have the right kind of model in your list, well, it's even worse. Now, luckily you are allowed to swap one of your classified objectives for a secure HVT, which um, happens in um, the majority of my games, just because people don't want to spend extra orders and go out of their way to try to complete a classified objective, which might, might actually end up backfiring on them. Uh, so secure HVT is generally the way to go. You're, put it, you're moving your model over um, into a uh, range of theirs and trying to keep them from doing the same with yours. The only problem is that some missions have two classified objectives, so you can only uh, substitute it for one of them. Also, if you're going first, and again, this is another thing against taking first turn a lot of cases, your opponent can kill the thing that's trying to secure their HVT and put something in range of, of your HVT more easily. So it just it benefits one player more than the other. So having having gone through all of this, I think we can see that Classified objectives have the potential, they don't always do this, but they have the potential to favor one player more than the other based on just the luck of the draw, the luck of what which cards you, you, you dish out. Now, Infinity already has a lot of variance in it. There's a lot of, of, of actually uh, of, of, of diversity in terms of the game situations that arise as a result of face-to-face -face roles going wrong and things like that. So we already have that in the game. Most players, including me, don't believe that we need the extra amount in the extent of these ex additional missions where you might be having a really close game with your opponent and it's basically coming down to a, a draw in like safe area or something in terms of the zones and one guy uh, happens to be, um, you know, having finding a lot easier with completing their classified because they just had an easy old you know, experimental drug on their side, whereas you're stuck with sabotage and, um, you know, HVT designation and you've lost a couple of key models or you can't really get over there because your opponent's got too much in the way in terms of mines and, you know, TO sniper or something like that. So you just, for that particular game, you can't. So you have to swap, swap, swap it for uh, secure the HVT, but you're having to go first, so you can't reliably put a model there. Uh, so that might have been a game that you were able to draw or even win had you just managed to get one of the other, you know, doable classifieds, maybe if your uh, sabotage had actually been a extreme prejudice or a telemetry, then you could have pulled it off. But because you didn't get the cards, well, uh, sucks to be you. So a lot of people don't like uh, finding themselves in a small advantage uh, because of that kind of mechanic when they didn't, they, they could have just been playing in a version in a, a version of Infinity where that didn't need to happen. So you can see, sort of see in ITS, there are some missions where uh, classified objectives really aren't going to make a difference, or in fact, um, aren't even there. Uh, there, there are, uh, there's at least one or two missions now where you don't even do a classified. It's just more about um, the designated target and killing it. And I think that's where uh, the future of Infinity needs to be in terms of this kind of thing. If the mission objective requires you to maybe get four or five objective points out of you know the main objective where it's you know pressing buttons or getting zones or killing your opponent, 
And then the secondary side of it is using your data tracker to move over and kill their designated target. Uh, that's a sort of secondary thing. And you have to think very carefully about who your data tracker is going to be, where, where you actually place them at the start of the game, you know, how you're going to get them over there, how you're going to prevent your opponent from doing the same thing. So that, that makes an Infinity interesting and uh, an intelligent game and a very diverse game. Um, and it's not really uh, luck based in the sense that you're not really getting a random card draw determining uh, how where the goalposts are for, for doing that. The only thing that determines your success in that is really how well you play in terms of your decisions, which um, I like and a lot of people other like uh, people like as well. Coming back to the mission highly classified, that's where you've got four of these classified objectives which you you know both have to go for and then a couple of secret ones as far as I can remember. We'll have to have a have a look at it, but the the reason why I uh, really despise that mission is that um, some factions probably have an easier time of it than others. Like if you could imagine Imperial Service, if a test run comes up, well, you can basically get a free uh, tick on that column because your soft attack revives a biolocator Quangxi, whereas your opponent um, actually has to lose a model. And you know, in that mission, you just don't have to shoot anything if you don't want to. Your opponent could just run around with a bulleteer in your lines and you can just dodge and just let them shoot you. So long as maybe you've had a turn or you've got some hidden deployment models which can actually re react by picking up one or two mission objectives. If, if you know that your opponent can't complete anything, then you don't necessarily have to sort of fight back in that in that sense just to deny them the, the, uh, the uh, objective. I know that's not going to come up a lot, guys, but I'm just sort of talking about the, the potential of that situation. I'm not saying that was always the case. All right, um, highly classified. That's way down the end. There are some other sort of features of that mission too, like stuff that has a lot of um, NWI and dogged uh, means that your your stuff's not going to be going into unconscious state, so they can't really get a um, a cutigraph from it for extreme prejudice. Uh, I think going first is probably superior in that mission, just because it gives you the first opportunity to kill. The only things that they can use, like if they've got an engineer and you kill it with a speculo killer, well, they've lost their ability to complete test run. They can't complete sabotage unless they've got something else in the army with decharges. If they shoot back and kill your uh, speculo and leave a corpse there, well, to prevent them from getting um, extreme prejudice, well, you could just use the auto med kit. If they shoot at you uh, in, in broad daylight, well, you just lose the model. And if you revive the model, well, you just keep moving until they kill you. Um, or if you fail the check, the model's removed, so you're not giving that up. There are just these annoying little tactics you can do which give uh, some factions a bit more of an advantage. Also, I'm not too sure if this is true or not, but somebody told me that Toha didn't even have a, a way of completing Test Run because they had no models with structure points until Corvus Belly actually released some, making up for their oversight. It's not uncommon for uh, Corvus Belly to fuck things up so badly, but sometimes you know, it happens they've got to cover their tracks. Um, one other thing which a lot of people don't like, and this is not really material to the, the rules and so forth, but just in terms of Infinity being a game that, that captures the imagination, that's very cinematic, you can sort of uh, imagine how a fight unfolds in your mind when you're playing, and that can make the game very entertaining. In Highly Classified, uh, what you're wanting to do is actually move out with, you know, something that you want to be hit, and knowing that they can't really shoot back at you. Let's say um, enemy opponent's got a, a link team with a, a guy with a missile launcher, and he's covering the table, so I move out with my Rushi. Um, if he shoots at me, it's going to put my Rushi probably into unconscious level 1 or level 2, so I can get the Esophitech next to it and revive it with test run and get a point. And if he doesn't shoot at me, well, I can just blow him away, and I've got shock ammunition, so I'm just removing his corpse so he can't complete um, experimental drug. So it's just a really kind of silly interaction how you're deliberately sending out your models to die. There's also a bit of controversy about whether it's acceptable to, in a desperate situation, like throw your own models off buildings or something, just purely because you need something to use to complete um, test run or experimental drug. I mean, you guys tell me what you think if you like that kind of thing. I mean, it's it's allowed in the rules. You're allowed to jump, you know, and you're allowed to sort of take falls like that. There's nothing actually stopping you as far as I know. But it just seems kind of lame to me. Like, why Why would you want that in your game? Why would you want to play that very variation of Infinity? I just don't really think so. Um, so Highly Classified is basically a game that sort of devolves into um, just denying your opponent the ability to complete certain objectives while just finding the easiest way to complete your own ones. Um, it doesn't turn the, the game of Infinity into one where it's just about the objectives because there are plenty of other uh, scenarios which allow you that. If you're playing safe area or um, comm center, 
it's not going to be about like just wiping the floor of your opponent. You're going to be really considering the scenario for that one for sure. I also want to say that we, um, just coming back to a point I made near the start of this video, party classifieds and, and the classified objectives in general, that's not the mechanic that's making this game about the, the objectives, right? The game is not going to devolve into this game of, oh, how, I can, how can I just most efficiently kill my opponent? If we don't have classified objectives, we're not going to be taking lists which just only have, you know, killing in them. We're still probably going to be taking some hackers and doctors and engineers and stuff like that and, and, and actually using those models. If, if you imagine somebody who's like, oh man, you know, if it wasn't for all of these, uh, you know, secondary objectives, I would just take the list which will just stomp you and just crush you and wipe you off the table. I'm pretty sure that if that was actually possible, people would be taking those kind of lists because killing your opponent is uh, the best way of actually completing missions. Have you ever played a game where in turn one, you've basically taken out 200 points worth of your opponent's models and reduced them to like four or five orders? There's nothing they can do. You've got two turns left. Just avoid them. Don't put them into retreat. Just go around and complete the objectives very easily. And that's how you get a 10-0. So that's actually something which is already in the game. And, and, and people accept that. Um, if there was a, like an, a list you could write which would automatically do that, I'd be playing that every single game. But it's not the list. It's not the, the style of play there which is causing that. It's you outplaying your opponent when that happens. It's your opponent making some deployment mistakes, you probably having pretty good dice, and having a better game plan than them to actually achieve that crushing sort of early game sort of material lead. It's nothing to do with classifieds or, or, or the mission objective in those particular cases. Most of my games of Infinity, and especially my really good, enjoyable games of Infinity, have come down to balance and decision-making in terms of, okay, I've got an opportunity to commit my troops a bit more and get some more kills, but I also need to set up for a scenario. I need to reserve some troops. I need to defend some models, so I'm doing a variety of things with my turn. It doesn't usually have much to do with uh, classified objectives. I, um, I usually ignore classifieds unless I've got a very easy one to do and just trust that I can actually beat my opponent based on the big point swings from the, the main objective. I go for secure the HVT quite a lot. It's only really if there's a, an, obviously a, a super easy opportunity to pick up telemetry, experimental drug, or, um, or uh, extreme prejudice that I'd even uh, go for that. Sometimes sabotage, but... Again, I mean, spending three to four orders on my doctor to bring it over to their side of the table and potentially get killed is something I'd only do if I was desperate. So all in all, um, classified objectives could be better. I think the key to improving them is to start shifting missions towards where they're already going uh, in terms of designated targets instead of HVTs and actually using data trackers and incorporating more secondary uh, objectives into the, the lists in the game uh, rather than having them as these sort of uh, deck of cards where you're dealt with a, a, a random uh, potential point, which may be harder or easier depending on how lucky you got. So that's uh, what I think of them. And uh, let's hope that we don't see too much uh, highly classified in future.